A true and faithful Christian does not make holy living an accidental thing. It is his great concern. As the business of the soldier is to fight, so the business of the Christian is to be like Christ. Resolution 1. I will live for God. Resolution 2. If no one else does, I still will. How can you expect to dwell with God forever, if you so neglect and forsake Him here? The enjoyment of God is the only happiness with which our souls can be satisfied. Spiritual delight in God arises chiefly from His beauty and perfection, not from the blessings He gives us. You contribute nothing to your salvation except the sin that made it necessary. It is not by telling people about ourselves that we demonstrate our Christianity. Words are cheap. It is by costly, self-denying Christian practice that we show the reality of our faith. When God is about to do a mighty new thing He always sets His people praying. Almost every natural man that hears of hell, flatters himself that he shall escape it. He who is Christ has all he needs and needs no more. Seek not to grow in knowledge chiefly for the sake of applause, and to enable you to dispute with others, but seek it for the benefit of your souls. A truly humble man is sensible of his natural distance from God, of his dependence on him, of the insufficiency of his own power and wisdom, and that it is by God's power that he is upheld and provided for, and that he needs God's wisdom to lead and guide him, and his might to enable him to do what he ought to do for it. Nature is God's greatest evangelist. True salvation always produces an abiding change of nature in a true convert. Therefore, whenever holiness of life does not accompany a confession of conversion, it must be understood that this sin, individual is not a Christian. He that lives a prayerless life, lives without God in the world. Nothing sets a person so much out of the devil's reach as humility. Truth is the agreement of our idea, with the ideas of God. Christ is like a river in another respect. A river is continually flowing, there are fresh supplies of water coming from the fountain head continually, so that a man may live by it, and be supplied with water, all his life. So Christ is an ever-flowing fountain. He is continually supplying his people, and the fountain is not spent. They who live upon Christ, may have fresh supplies from him to all eternity, they may have an increase of blessedness that is, new, and new still, and which never will come to an end. Every Christian family ought to be as it were a little church. There are people who love those who agree with them and admire them but have no time for those who oppose and dislike them. A Christian's love must be universal. God's purpose for my life was that I have a passion for God's glory and that I have a passion for my joy in the glory, and that these two are one passion. The seeking of the kingdom of God is the chief business of the Christian life. I go out to preach with two propositions in mind. First, Every person ought to give his life to Christ. Second, whether or not anyone else gives him his life, I will give him mine. The smallest sin is an act of cosmic treason against a holy God. A man who knows that he lives in sin against God will not be inclined to come daily into the presence of God. True boldness for Christ transcends all. It is indifference to the displeasure of either friends or foes. Boldness enables Christians to forsake all rather than Christ, and to prefer to offend all rather than to offend Him. They who truly come to God for mercy, come as beggars, and not as creditors, they come for mere mercy, for sovereign grace, and not for anything that is due.